I am hoping this is going to be a quick tutorial uh, just to illustrate how you can use masks to start blending and making some really surreal art using, uh, in this case I'm using Photopea, which is an online uh, photo editor. And uh, this is a picture that's been made by taking an ordinary picture for, of a bunny and then taking another picture where I can acquire some wings, doing a little bit of cleanup. And uh, the real thing I wanted to illustrate here was to use uh, masks instead of using the eraser tool to try to put these things together so you have a lot more flexibility. Something like this can be fine-tuned. So let's get started with it. First of all, I've got a couple of images that I've used. These should be in the public domain. This is a picture of an osprey. There's the picture of the bunny. And the first thing I want to do is I want to get these things combined. And in Photop, to use this, uh, the only way I can see to do this is to select everything and copy it. So I'm using a control C and I'm going to the bunny. I'm going control V and I'm pasting it in. So we get the two objects in different layers or the two pictures in different layers. And uh, next, I'm going to make a duplicate of this background. I'm going to right mouse click, duplicate the layer and move it up on top so that we can do some, some, a uh, little bit of additional touch up because we've got multiple layers going on in here. And now I'm going to start to select this. So I want to show you how you can use your keyboard to get a lot of this stuff done too. And some of the selection tools. First off, to select the Osprey, I want to just get mostly his wings. I'm going to use a tool up here which is called the Quick Select. And if I click anywhere inside of here, whoops, undo that. Quick Select, and then click anywhere inside of here. This is a pretty distinctive picture and it knows the difference between that sky and the Osprey in the object. Now I've got a little bit that's been messed up here. So with that Quick Select tool, you can see the outline of what it is there, the brush size. I'm going to reduce the brush, brush size by using the left square bracket to make it a little smaller. Go in here, hold the Alt key down, and you can reduce that quick select. And let go of the Alt key, and you can add the quick select again. Now, I'm finding it's a really imperfect system, and sometimes it's more work than it's worth trying to get this thing perfect at this point, because we can use the masks later on to perfect it. But we'll get something close like that. I'm using Control-0 to shrink this back down again. And now I would like to, now in this case, I, I, what I want to do is select this and jump him to a different layer, but I'm going to use masks instead. And masks can be found down at the bottom right here. If I click this, I get a mask and that has selected out the Osprey from his background. The way a mask works is I have basically got this uh, dual system here, the pixels that I want, and then sort of an alpha layer where white pixels in this little print here are are going to be um, solid and opaque, and black are going to be transparent. To click on this, by the way, when you click on this, it's like two different images in the same thing. And if you want to see this thing just in black and white, hold down the Alt key as you click on it, and it shows you just those pixels. So one of the things I realized, I really don't need all of this, you know, the nest that he's landing on down there. So you can, you know, just manipulate it as though it's regular pixels. I'm going to use the selection tool and I really don't need anything down below here. So I'm going to circle this whole thing. I'd like to fill this up with black. So use your default color. Click the D or hit the D key. And I'm going to flip flop this. Actually, I don't even have to flip flop it. I can fill this up with black by holding Alt and hitting the delete key. Oops, wrong. Control and hitting the delete key. And that fills it up. Now, if you do that, sometimes you get a little hairline along there. So I'm going to undo that a couple of times until I get back to this point fills up a selection with whatever's in your background. Okay, so far so good. And the other way that you can, you know, make this stuff look a little bit better is just simply use a brush tool. And to flip-flop this, get used to the X key. If you hover over this, it tells you that X is a shortcut. So if I want to paint with black to get rid of this little spot, I hit X and then I can just paint right over it like that. And I don't need any of this stuff. Truthfully, I don't need anything down here. Now this is not destroying the picture of the eagle. If I click back on over there, you can see it's just making it transparent. We can use this to refine the edge too, but this is how masks work. Get used to these two little squares here inside of your layers and get used to Alt clicking this to see the black and white version, just to correct yourself. Click back on this to bring it back. And don't Alt click this one because that does something really strange that starts to make things act as masks themselves in the layers. But we're not going to get into that today. So meanwhile, to get this thing done, and I'm probably not going to get it all the way done, just want to give you the overview of how it can happen. You can take this thing, and now you can start moving these wings roughly where you want them. The mask, the layer mask, and the wings will move the pixels at the same time. So I'm going to put his wings so it'll look pretty good. The wing will come out of the rabbit's shoulder like this. And now to put this thing whole thing together, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same treatment to the bunny up top. 
Now I found I had a real problem with this before. I was trying to use this object, or sorry, quick selection method, and I'm just clicking anywhere inside the bunny, and normally you just paint around the inside of the edge, but it seems to pick up the grass, and I'm not quite sure why that is, so I'm going to control D, deselect that. I tried another method. I tried the object selection mode, and then I just drew a great big square around it, and he seems to pick up the bunny pretty well, so that's good enough to get started with. And I'm going to go ahead and make a, a layer mask for that guy too. So now when I put the two of them together like this, you can see, oh, this is doing a real fast job of starting to put these things together. Now I want to start refining this, and we can refine this in a few different ways. Now one of the ways to do that is, okay, let's go back in there and let's clean up the edges of the bunny. Okay, so if I alt-click on this, you can see, ah, oh, this is pretty rough. Okay, if I click on the mask, this is where I want to paint. I know that I want to paint white. It's kind of like you're shining a light because it's white on certain parts, and I want to paint in black to hide certain parts. Okay, so I'll paint in black, and I'm going to use this brush. Get used to using those square brackets to make your brush smaller or bigger, and also always look at your, your settings for your brush too. I'm using a hardness of about 60%, and the size is variable as I keep using those angle brackets, but I can now go and paint the mask part of this so that I can erase things that are obviously wrong. And what I want to do is bring that bunny back. So I'm going to get rid of the stuff that's really green, take a fast go at it like this, oh, that's way too much. I'll hit the X key to flip-flop the black and the white, the foreground and the background color, and I can paint the bunny back. And you get the idea that you can refine this, this whole layer pretty easily. Now, obviously what makes most sense is to put everything back there, hit X and flip-flop it, and even shrink your brush down so you have a little control, and I suggest paint a little bit, let go. Paint a little bit and let go. You can always undo with a control Z if things go a little too far. Okay, so you can refine that edge. The next edge you might want to refine, okay, there's that wing back here. Okay, this is a lot of work. There's a lot of area that we have to refine here. So here's another little trick for this. If you hold down your control key and click on the mask, it will select the same channels, the same solid pixels that you used before. So right now it's selected all of these pixels, which includes some fringe that I want to get rid of. So here's what I'm going to do to get rid of them. First of all, I would like to paint them away, but I don't want to paint too far into it. So I'm going to invert this selection. If I go select and I go inverse, it's no longer selecting the wing, it's selecting the area outside the wing. Okay, so far so good. Now if I painted with black, it would get rid of anything, but I can only select pixels outside the wing, so it's not going to do anything. But if I could feather this, pun intended, I'm going to go to Select, I'm going to Modify, and I'm going to feather this by, let's say, two pixels. Two pixels is quite a bit. I'll say OK. Feathering means that it lets me bleed a little bit of that color through, and watch what happens if I go in there and start painting like this. I can actually get rid of some of those pixels. Now it starts eating into this a little bit, so you've got to be kind of careful with this. But I can start getting rid of some of those pixels. So here's what I'm going to do for this now, and I'm going to show you another trick. I'd really like to see exactly what the effect is on this edge. So I'm going to hide the selection with Control H. Control H hides it. And now if I did this, you can see it refines it. But I can do this a whole lot faster now if I could just make that brush nice and big. So I'm going to hit the square bracket, make it huge, and I'm just going to click once, and you'll see how it starts to fade all those, those edges. Click it again. It's twice. Maybe I'll click it a third time. The more times I do it, the more it erodes into that wing. But if I have something that's sort of in the background, this looks okay. So I'm going to go on over here and click this a few times. This is a really fast process. You don't have to work too, too hard. Hope you get the idea of that. And I could look at the wing that's going on over here, and I can do exactly the same thing, because it was also being affected. So I'm just going around cleaning up the wing a little bit. Getting rid of a little bit of that. It did a pretty good job actually of selecting it, but this lets stuff blend in really well. Okay, Blurs it, but that background is really blurry too. And now finally I'm going to start putting this wing back in place. I've got the, the, the bunny is here. You know, as I look at this bunny, let me, let me just take a look at this bunny by himself again. Alt, clicking this. Oh yeah, I've got more bunny than I need on this side, because the wing should be in the in the foreground for this. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of the, the bunny here. I will use black, and I will paint in here in this mask. And I'm going to bring back the bunny. Oh, 
I still have a selection. I'm still only painting inside the wing area. Control H reminds me. Oh yeah, there's still a selection. It was just hidden. To get rid of the selection, Control D will get rid of the selection. So it's gone. And now I'm able to paint in the bunny mask. And if I do this, oh yeah, I can start to bring that wing back. Now I can do this fairly carefully like this, but I'm just going to kind of all I'm doing is what I'm doing is I'm erasing the bunny in front of the wing. I'm not really affecting the wing layer at all. But I get the idea, okay, this is kind of where I wanted to go with this. And I can see, oh, I wanted to get rid of some more of that wing. Okay, I'll do this again. Control, click. The wing area gets the selection, like that. I'm going to do a feather. Select, modify, feather, two pixels. Okay. I'm going to hide the selection. Did I, uh, did I invert it yet? No, I don't think I did. Select inverse. So I'm selecting outside the wing and then I'll hide it. Control H. And once again, I want to paint black to get rid of this. So if I just click here, oh yeah, that's getting rid of it. Feathers that in. Once again, the pun is intended. Okay, good. So now to sort of get this where I wanted to go, I, I have a choice. I could either show the bunny again, or I can um, hide the wing to get rid of things that are a little bit awkward over here. By the way, to move this thing around, I'm holding down the space bar. And I'm moving this around. It makes things really easy. The keyboard commands make this so simple. So let's go back and say, okay, let's add some bunny back to it. Clicking here. I'm painting with black right now. I can see in the foreground color it's black. So if I want to paint with white to bring the bunny's cheek back, I hit X. And then I go back here and remember, oh yeah, I've still got that selection. It's just hidden. Control H brings it back. Control D gets rid of it. And now I can bring the bunny's cheek back. And I can make this a little bit smaller. When you make it smaller, the feather is a little more tight, which is, I think, what we want to do. So I'm going to bring that bunny back, something like this. And you got this choice. You can um, either add bunny from on top, or you can remove wing, if that makes more sense, um, depending on how you've done it. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the basis of putting this whole thing together. There's lots more that can go on with this. Uh, for one thing, it would make an awful lot of sense to put a little shadow underneath this wing, but that might be a tutorial for another day. Give this a try. See how you do. Good luck.